So just like all the game needs materials for basic constructions, this game also needs material for its basic constructions, upgrades, and for shipbuilding. And that's where I'm going to focus on this video. So first, I'm going to talk about the 4 basic materials that we need for our constructions and shipbuilding. So we have ice, ore, alloy, and gas, which all are essential for our growth in this game. The ice, ore, and gas are needed for building your ship's components, while alloy is mostly needed for constructions. And my advice for you is to try to balance all four of these basic resources, because some of them are sometimes difficult to reach because, for example, when you're just starting out, you will have lots of, let's say, ice and gas near your home and less to other resources so you may want to reach for those other resources to balance them all so next is the AP or action points you can also click the AP icon to open up this menu and it says here AP is used for exterminating pirates and fleet anomalies and it's also needed for constructing outposts, turrets or field disruptors it's also needed when mining minerals like the ice or alloy and gas but before you can mine minerals or construct an outpost, you first need to meet certain requirements. Just click this thing here to open this menu and then you can click the eye icon to open up further information. So it says here, you need 3500 authority to unlock mining, 4000 for guarding and supply fleets, and 5000 authority to construct building outside your home base, like the outpost, turrets, and field disruptor. And next is our quantum credits. I think you already know this one but I will explain it anyway. Quantum credit is your generosity you put into the game. Quantum credits can't be used directly to buy anything in the market. You can only use it to convert it into Nova credits before you can buy anything in the game. So next is the Nova credits which I think is the main currency of the game apart from the ISK credit or Z credits. You can use Nova Credits to buy certain items in the market. Furthermore, you can get Nova Credits in daily logins, missions, also in your corporation missions, and in your corporation missions daily box. You can also get Nova Credits from achievements, events, and in the Galactic Legends and game rewards. Also, you're probably going to use more of your Nova Credits to buy a legendary cachet. So it says here, in every 5 draws, you have a chance to win 4 to 5 commanders or ships or ship blueprint. Then the count resets to 1 and so on. You can also get 1 free draw in every 12 hours. You can click the preview to check what's inside of the cache and click the question mark to check the probabilities of your draws. For the Rising Star cache, you need encoded tickets to purchase them. And the only way to get encoded tickets so far is by completing missions, daily logins, and in Galactic Legends and Game Rewards. For the Evermore Cache, the chance of getting a commander or ship is 100%, but you need 100 Ever Credits to open one. And you can get Ever Credits in daily logins, and sometimes it appears in the shop, but in my opinion, it's too costly to buy 1 Ever Credits for 200 Nova Credits, since we need 100 Ever Credits to open 1 Evermore Cache. Ever Credits sometimes appear in Military Exploit Shop, and lastly, you can get them in the Galactic Legends and Game Rewards. And here are the 3 kinds of endgame exclusive rewards for the winning corporation. We have the Galactic Legends, the Renegade, and the Epic Cache. And apart from the exclusive items, you can open 20 of the exclusive cache using the Nova Credits. But I don't have an idea how much it costs per opening one since I have yet to open one myself. And finally, the ISK Credits are Z Credits. We have 2 free levies per day and 3 double levies at the cost of 40 Nova Credits. You can also increase your Z Credits production by building bank in your home base, assembling a trade hub, and by capturing resorts. The basic use of Z Credits is for unlocking and upgrading your ship's modules and also for replenishing your fleet outside of your home base. Also, you can use Z Credits to buy certain items in the shop. 
Z credits is very essential later on or very early in the game, along with the four basic resources because we will need to repair our fleets in outposts, citadels, or in stargates which cost Z credits and other resources. And as a bonus tips, I'll show you how to navigate the map and show you some shortcuts and other functions like how to capture high grid levels and different upgrades of grids from level 6 to level 10. Alright, so I have two fleets here, one with 93k power and the other one with 99k power. So I'm going to raid this level 10 alloy to demonstrate how to capture a higher level grid. By the way, all the level 10 basic resources like the ice or alloy and gas has the same defender power of 60k times 3 fleets. My advice on how to capture high level resources is just overpower the defender which is the easiest way but you can also match the defender's power if you want to rush it but send two or three fleets with similar power just to be sure. Another tip is the distance between your fleet and the target. So you can check the distance here on the right side of your screen so you don't need to count the tiles to the target. Next tip is the resources upgrade per grid level. So we have 5 different resources upgrade depending on their levels we can assemble different buildings. So let's start with the level 10 resource grid. So upgrading or assembling a level 10 resource grid will turn it into a booster array. And it says here, booster array can shorten your stamina recovery and the effect stacks. But we can only build 2 booster arrays. And level 9 resources can be transformed into an inventory that works like a vault. So basically, this building will just increase your vault's limits and it's stackable. But there are limits to how much advanced building that we can transform or assemble. So next is the level 8 resource and you can transform it into a port. This building increases our maximum ship components and it is stackable. Next is the level 7 resource which you can transform or assemble into a harvest array. This building increases all 4 of our basic resources output and is stackable and you can build 10 of this advanced structure if you want to. And lastly, the level 6 resource will turn into a trade hub which increases your ISK credits output and also is stackable and you can also build 10 if you want to. So that's all the advanced structure that we have so far and there's no advanced structure below level 6. Next step is the shortcut button here. You can click this two icon to switch to your fleet and personal marks. Next step is how to replenish and transfer your fleet. So you can transfer your fleet to citadel or stargates and that will be their temporary home. And when your fleet gets defeated in battle, the last citadel or stargate they transfer into will return them to that station rather than into your home base. Lastly, the map navigation. So if you're not familiar on map navigation, just click the map. Then you can zoom out and click anywhere you want. Then just click the go right down on your screen to go there. And lastly, the capacitor. It says here, the capacitor affects the power of the fleet, lower capacitor will reduce the attack and defense of your fleet, the power of your fleet is maximized at 100 capacitor. And it also says the capacitor of fleet can be increased to 120 by building capacitor laboratory. Capacitor decrease by 1 for every grid that the fleet travels and capacitor recover by 0.5 every idle minute and will be fully recovered by returning to the station or outpost or your home base. So that's all for this video. I hope it helps and thank you for watching and see you later. Bye!